हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दैस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री बिफोर स्टार्टिंग टू डेज टॉपिक प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडेज टॉपिक फॉर द लेक्चर इज कैथोड रेस दैट इज द डिस्कवरी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो आई एम गोइंग टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द कैथोड रेस एंड हाउ वी रिलेटेड टू द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल the nature and existence of electrons was established by experiments on the conduction of electricity through gases so let me write this thing the nature and existence of electrons the nature and existence of electrons was established by the experiments was established by experiments on the conduction of electricity through gases experiments on conduction of electricity through the gases now in 1859 julius plucker started these types of conduction experiments in 1859 who was a scientist who initiated this thing in 1859 the name of person was julius plucker started the study of conduction of electricity through gases started the conduction of electricity through gases conduction of electricity through gases now but the point is gases are usually poor conductor of electricity now i am writing gases are usually gases are usually poor conductor of electricity at ordinary or high pressures at ordinary or high pressures due to which julius plucker have done that conduction experiment in a discharge tube so that's why julius plucker has taken a tube called discharge tube in which pressure can be minimized discharge tube so what is exactly discharge tube it consists of hard cylindrical tube it consists of hard glass cylindrical tube hard glass cylindrical tube in which two metal electrodes are sealed at both the ends in which two metal electrodes are sealed at both ends and it is attached with and it is also attached with 
वैक्यूम पंप टू डिक्रीज द प्रेशर नाउ द पॉइंट कम्स वाई वी हैव टू डिक्रीज द प्रेशर बिकॉज बिकॉज गैसेस कैन कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिकॉज गैसेस कैन कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एट अ वेरी लो प्रेशर एट अ वेरी लो प्रेशर ऑफ द ऑर्डर टेन टू द पार माइनस फोर एटमोस्फेयर्स एंड अ वेरी हाई वोल्टेज इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड अ वेरी हाई वोल्टेज इज रिक्वायर्ड that is nearly 10000 volts 10000 volts for making gas to conduct electricity to conduct electricity now when this high voltage that's of 10000 volt and a very low pressure is maintained that's that's for minus 4 atmosphere the gases can conduct electricity in the discharge tube between the electrodes uh let me draw the diagram for the discharge tube i'm making it first of all this is my glass discharge tube that's my one electrode that's my another electrode i'm taking this discharge taking this discharge tube in an electrical circuit with a high, very high voltage battery now i have to fix a vacuum pump i have to fix a vacuum pump let it be over here to decrease the pressure and i have to apply a very high voltage battery that's of nearly 10000 volts so i'm labeling it now this is my a uh, high voltage battery this is my high voltage battery now let's take this electrode to be negative the negative electrode is called cathode this to be positive the positive electrode is called anode i have maintained a gas this this is my vacuum pump to maintain the gas at a very low pressure of 10 to minus 4 atmospheres now what will happen what will happen when a high voltage is applied i'm writing when the high voltage is applied applied on a gas maintained at very low pressure maintained at very low pressure comma the stream of rays the stream of rays originate from cathode originate from 
कैथोड एंड ट्रैवल्स टूवर्ड्स एनोड एंड ट्रैवल्स टूवर्ड्स एनोड and are termed as and these rays are termed as cathode rays because they are originating from cathode so when a high voltage is applied on the gas maintained at a very low pressure the stream of rays originate from cathode and it travels towards anode and these rays are termed as cathode rays so let's have a look on the diagram what will happen the stream of rays will originate from cathode and they will travel toward anode so these are the rays that i am mentioning in the green color that these are the rays that originate from cathode and they travel towards anode and these rays are termed as cathode rays because they are originating from cathode so my dear students hope you got my initial results of the experiment which were performed by julius plucker so what he has done i'm repeating it again he has applied a high voltage across a gas which is maintained at a very low pressure of 0.01 atmosphere or 10 to the power minus 4 atmosphere due to which the gas becomes conducting and due to which uh, there will be the conduction of electricity by the gas and it is proved by emission of rays that originate from cathode and it travel towards anode so let us study some properties of these cathode rays uh in the diagram i have also used the vacuum pump what's the role of vacuum pump the vacuum pump maintains the very low pressure of 10 to the minus 4 atmosphere the role of vacuum pump is to Uh, drain out all the air present in the discharge tube to maintain the pressure of only 10 to the minus 4 atmosphere. That was the role of vacuum pump. So let us discuss some characteristics of the cathode rays. So I am starting my topic. Characteristics of cathode rays. so the first characteristic or the property of cathode rays comes out to be cathode rays travel in a straight line with a speed approaching to that of light and their linear propagation is shown by the fact that they cast the shadows of the solid object when they placed in their path let me first of all draw a diagram for you i have taken this discharge tube here is my cathode i'm writing c c for cathode and it's a negative charge and here i'm taking anode i'm writing a a for anode and it's in positive charge now what will happen uh first of all i am putting an a solid object in its path i am putting an one solid object in its path like this if i put this solid object in this path what will happen as we all know cathode rays originate from cathode and they travel towards anode the rays will travel like this but the rays which strike this solid object will get blocked so these two rays gets blocked the three rays and and it is going like this and the cathode rays are going like this that means i got the i got the shadow of this object over here i got the shadow of this object over here so this proves that cathode rays travel in the straight line 
as as they cast cast shadow of the solid object which is placed in their path so i'm writing the first property i'm writing sorry cathode rays travels in a straight line and its speed and its speed approaches the speed of light and its speed approaches the speed of light this fact that cathode rays travel in straight line is disproved it is proved by this fact is proved by the solid object placed in their path by the solid object placed in their path full stop now what will happen when solid object is placed in the path of the cathode rays i'm writing cathode rays will cast cathode rays will cast shadow of that object shadow of that object on anode as rays got blocked by that object this fact proves that cathode rays travels in a straight line proving that cathode rays travel in straight line cathode rays travels in a straight line as we all know it is also the property of the sunlight is also the property of the the tube or the bulb on your room they cast the shadows of the object if that if that object is placed in the path of that light the same way the cathode rays cast the shadow of the object which is placed in their path but that shadow will be in the op opposite next direction the in the direction in which the cathode rays are moving that shadow will be casted on the object in the direction in which the cathode rays are moving so that was my first point that cathode rays travel in a straight line now second point let us talk about the second point cathode rays produces a temperature rise of any object they strike i'm writing cathode rays produces heat effect produces heat effect as the temperature of that body rise temperature of that body rise on which cathode rays strike you can measure the temperature of the object before placing in the path of cathode rays and after placing in the path of the cathode rays you can see that you can have a reading or you can measure that temperature of that body rises when it is placed in the path of the cathode rays or you can also measure the temperature of the anode before starting the experiment and during or after the experiment you can see that the temperature of anode is also risen now let's talk about the third point uh the cathode rays pass through the thin films of metal but they are stopped by thicker foils i'm writing 
कैथोड रेज कैन पास थ्रू थिन फिल्म ऑफ मेटल बट दे आर स्टॉप्ड बाय थिक्कर फॉइल्स बट दे आर स्टॉप्ड बाय थिक्कर फॉइल्स नाउ इट्स एन वेरी इजी पॉइंट दैट कै थोड्रेस कैन पास हो थिन फिल्म ऑफ मेटल बट वेन वी यूज अ थिक्कर फॉइल्स और अ हैवी मेटल द कैथोड्रेस विल बी ब्लॉक्ड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट कैथोड रेस कैन प्रोड्यूस द मकैनिकल इफेक्ट बिकॉज इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सॉलिड चार्ज मटीरियल पार्टिकल्स नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दिस पॉइंट फॉर दिस थिंग अगेन आई एम मेकिंग द डायग्राम that's my cathode and that's my anode that's my cathode and this is a negative charge that's my anode and that's my positive charge in this diagram what i'm going to do i'm making an apparatus inside in which i am making i'm sorry i am fixing a gear i'm fixing a gear over here i hope you understood what's the gear or you can see it's a fan a small fan what will happen now we as we all know cathode rays originate from cathode and travel towards the anode in a straight line path so i'm making it the cathode rays are traveling but the cathode rays which strike this fan the cathode rays that strike this fan will cause this fan to revolve or sorry to rotate in this direction when cathode rays strike the fan it will cause the rotation of that fan why fan rotated there must be some solid particles in the cathode rays which have striked the fan and fan get rotated so it proves that some solid particles are there in the cathode rays so i'm writing the cathode rays produces the mechanical effect the cathode rays produces mechanical effect when cathode rays are made to strike when cathode rays are made to strike on a small fan placed in its path placed in its path the fan rotated the fan rotated in the direction in the direction of movement of cathode rays in the direction of movement of cathode rays this proves that this proves that cathode rays consists of small solid particles which strikes fan and causes 
rotation and cause its rotation so that was my fourth point now let's talk about the fifth point the cathode rays can be deflected by electric and magnetic field and the direction of deflection is such that these particles bears the negative charge the solid particles which i have talked about in the previous point these particles bear the negative charge so let's do about this thing let's i'm uh, making a diagram for it i have again taken a discharge tube i have fixed cathode over here as a negative charge anode over here it's a positive charge on next i'm doing i'm putting two electrodes from the magnetic field in their sides in the sides of a discharge tube this pole is negative pole of that field and i'm fixing the another pole over here and this pole is positive now what will happen cathode rays which are traveling towards anode will get deflected in the magnetic field and magnetic field the deflection in magnetic field is such that the particles in cathode rays bears the negative charge as the cathode rays get deflected in the direction of positive pole now the cathode rays is coming and is getting deflected in the direction of positive pole cathode rays in the direction of positive pole again the direction of positive pole direction of positive pole it signifies that the particles present in the cathode rays were negatively charged so i'm writing first of all the cathode rays can be deflected i'm writing the cathode the cathode rays can be can be deflected in electric and magnetic field and direction of deflection and direction of deflection will be towards positive pole confirming that confirming that particles or you can say solid particles in cathode rays bears negative charge bears negative charge so these particles were termed as electrons by j j thompson so these negatively charged particles these negatively charged particles were named as electrons by j j thompson when he performed some calculative work for different gases and different types of cathodes different metals from which the cathode have been made so sir j j thompson have done some mathematical calculation he has find out the charge to mass ratio of particles by taking different gases and different material of cathode
let's talk about this first of all i am now writing the next point which sir jj thompson have noticed from here the work of sir jj thompson is started has started the sixth point the nature of cathode rays is independent the nature of cathode rays is independent of the nature of the cathode obviously the you can write the material the material or more specifically the metal it is independent of the metal of which cathode is made and it is also the independent of the gas taken in the discharge tube the gas in discharge tube so what sir jj thompson has done in 1897 in 1897 jj thompson determined the charge to mass ratio determined charge to mass that is e divided by m charge to mass ratio of the electrons by studying the diff by studying the deflection of cathode rays in the electric and the magnetic field in 1897 jj thomson determined the charge to mass ratio of electrons by studying their deflection by studying their deflection in electric and magnetic field studying deflection in electric and magnetic field he performed a series of experiments he performed series of experiments by taking different gases by taking different gases in discharge tube and by taking different metals of which cathode is made of which cathode is made what sir j a thompson observed he observed that he observed that charge to mass ratio always comes out to be same comes out to be same for all gases and all metals of cathode so he termed that a negatively charged particle is universally present in all type of matter and here he named that particle to be electron 
so he concluded he concluded that negatively charged particle is present particle is present in is present universally is present universally in all type of matters and termed it as electrons so that was a discovery of electrons by the conduction of electricity by the gas in the discharge tube in the discharge tube i hope you all understood today's lecture if any students wants to book a paid one to one online class then you can contact me my phone number is mentioned on thumbnail of this lecture please like subscribe and share my channel to maximum number of students don't forget to press the subscribe button stay blessed